Welcome to Electro Online. Now let's review how to find the electric field due to various arrangements. And we're going to start with point charges, and in particular, point charges are arranged on a line. So whenever we try to find the electric field, it will be some point in space. What is the electric field at this location, or at this location, or at this location, due to the presence of charges nearby? So first, what we're going to do is we're going to have the charges on a line, and the point that we're interested in to find the electric field is going to be along that line. Makes it a little bit easier, because that way we don't have to worry about the angles. So, what is the methodology to do that? Well, we have to follow some instructions here. We first want to draw the vectors representing the electric field at the location of interest due to the presence of the charges. Now, let's say that this here is Q1, and this here is Q2. It's always a good idea to label your charges, and so then we can find the vector belonging to the electric field caused by Q1 and the vector belonging to the electric field caused by U2. Now, we know that the electric field from a positive charge emanates away from the charge, so at this location it would be away from this positive charge, and so we're going to have an electric field in this direction. Let's call it E1, the electric field caused by charge 1, and it's going to be a relatively weak field because you're farther away from the positive charge than you are from the negative charge, and the magnitude of the positive charge is smaller, so we expect a smaller electric field. So you try to guess about relative how strong the field would be. And then the electric field caused by this charge, well, we know the field emanates towards the charge, or moves to, or not moves, but points towards the negative charge. So it'll be at this location in this direction, and since you're closer to this charge and it's a bigger magnitude charge, you expect a much bigger electric field to be caused by that charge at this location. And so that's a good representation of what the two electric fields look like at the location based upon where those other charges are. All right, now we want to know the magnitude of each of these charges. So we're going to calculate the magnitude of each of the charges. And so we use the equation that the electric field magnitude due to the first charge is equal to K times Q1 divided by the distance from the location we're interested in to where the charge is at, so we call R1 squared. Plugging in the numbers, so this is equal to 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared, multiply times Q1, which is 4 times 10 to the minus 6 Coulombs, uh, and we divide that by the distance squared, so 2 meters plus 2 meters, which is 4 meters squared. And what do we get? So now we need a calculator. So we get 9e to the 9 times 4e to the 6 minus divided by 4 squared equals, and we end up with 2250 newtons per coulomb. Notice how the meter square cancel out, one of the coulomb square cancels out, so we end up with newtons per coulomb. Now we calculate the strength of the electric field of the second one, that would be K times Q2. And remember that since we're just looking for the magnitude, we don't care if it's a positive or negative charge, we just take the magnitude of the charge divided by the distance to that charge from the point of interest squared, and so this would be 9 times 10 to the 9th. That would be newton meter squared per coulomb squared times, this would be 6 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. Again, we're just looking for the magnitude of the charge divided by the distance, which now would be 2 meters, and that is squared. So what do we get here? Get uh, 9e to the 9th times 6e to the 6 minus times oop, 1 divided by 4 equals, and we get 13,500 newtons per coulomb. And just as we predicted, the magnitude of the second electric field caused by the second charge is much bigger than the magnitude of the first. So now the last thing is simply add up the vector quantities. Now since we're going to be adding vectors, we need to make sure we keep track of the signs. So we know that E, the total electric field at the location of interest, is simply the vector sum of E1 plus E2. Now you say, well, why didn't I 
put a negative on E2 because it's pointing to the left. Well, that comes when we put in what they actually are, but this is how we write this down. We're simply adding the two vectors together, and so that would be equal to the first vector, which is E1 pointing to the right, so it would be a plus 2250 newtons per coulomb in the x direction, so that's how we write the first electric field, and then the second one, since it's pointing to the left, would be minus 13,500 newtons per coulomb in the x direction, and so when we add the two together, we subtract uh, 2250 from that, so we get minus 11,250 newtons per coulomb in the x direction, so that would be the magnitude and direction of the total electric field caused by these two charges at that location. Let me quickly check to see if we do that right. Something is, yeah, let's see, 13,500, yep, okay. Just want to make sure I didn't make any arithmetic, error, arithmetic errors. But that is how we calculate the electric field at a location. You calculate the field caused by each of the charges, and then you do a vectorial sum. If they're all lined up, we don't have to worry about the angle. But on the next example, we'll have a situation where we do have to worry about the angle. It makes things a little bit more complicated. But again, it'll be kind of the same procedure to solve that one.